snakes have evolved all kinds of different shapes, sizes, colors, and behaviors that increase their fitness in the wild. And especially in the tropical rainforests of Costa Rica, these characteristics can be extremely exaggerated. Many rainforest dwelling species have become specialized in the consumption of certain prey items to reduce competition with other snakes, which has resulted in some very unique adaptations that benefit their particular niche. In this video, we'll take a look at two snakes that are each perfectly suited for two very different lifestyles. Okay. Okay guys, so what we have right here is actually a juvenile lowland forest racer. Now it might not actually be a lowland forest racer, it is a type of racer. I'm going with the ID of lowland forest racer just because that's the first thing that popped into my head when I looked at it. Although this does stand to be corrected um, after we get the field guide. Now he is throwing, oh there we go. Got him out here. Let me show this to you guys. I cannot believe we spotted him. Doing it on this steep trail. I just saw him on the side of the path. I'll stand up so I don't look like an idiot. We just saw him right on the side of the path as we were coming down this hill. Only his head was poking out of the leaf litter. And honestly, at first, I thought that this was an anole. Then I realized that it had a body. Then I realized it wasn't, basically. But yeah, that is definitely a juvenile. So if this is a lowland forest racer or, or maybe brown forest racer, Either way, they have pretty similar ec ecological niches. So once they are adults, they will behave just like racers back at home. So they're diurnal hunters. They use their really good eyesight and their excellent sense of smell to track down a variety of different prey items. Now, one interesting feature on this one is actually, if you look under the chin, we have some neon green. <laughs> we have a folly volunteer. We have some neon green going on on that chin right there. That will probably be useful and identification, but you can see total length of the snake is maybe a foot and a half at the most. So he has a lot of growing to do. These probably get up to around six feet in length. Uh, and just like other racers back at home, they will stay pretty slim uh, and they can move extremely fast as they go throughout the leaf litter. That's a really, really pretty little snake. I can't believe we found one on this trail this is not a trail I would expect to see snakes on him. That is so cool. What a beautiful little individual. We'll take some pictures and get him right back in the wild. Right. So we're going to get this guy right back exactly where he came from. Right over here in this leaf litter. I bet he will dart. And you guys can see why they're called racers in a second here. Ready? Look at that. Gone. Just like that. While finding a new species of ground hunting specialist was definitely pretty cool, I was also hoping to film an example of a snake that makes its living high in the canopy. Fortunately, the very next day, I was lucky enough to encounter just what I was looking for. Alright guys, check it out. Look what we have here. Hey little man. Hey. Hello? That is a juvenile green parrot snake. Look at that even has the aggressive posture a little bit, that's awesome. Now this is definitely a juvenile of this species. Actually, green parrot snakes can get up to around uh, six feet long, I believe, at max size. They're very elongate snakes. Now, as you can probably already tell by the head size compared to the body width and just how elongated his body is, this is, and we have a dog, <laughs> this is an arboreal species. So. These guys are found primarily high in the canopy, uh, especially during the day is when they primarily do their hunting. Now, I'll show you some shots right now, some close-ups of the head. His eyeball is extraordinarily large compared to the rest of his skull, which is one indicator that this is a diurnal species. Uh, and these are very, very visual hunters. So oftentimes, uh, it was very fortunate actually that we found him on the ground because usually they are in the treetops. And you'll see them sticking out just like that and you can see he can hold his head perfectly still and he just scans for anoles. Now these guys love eating tree frog and anoles. Those are their two primary foods, I believe. Now they are not really venomous. They are rear fanged 
Um, and so just like other snakes we've covered on the channel, such as ringneck snakes, you have those two reverse facing fangs right in the back of the head there. But in order to release venom, it actually has to latch on and chew its prey. And just kind of use that motion to inflict some very, very mild neurotoxins, which it uses to immobilize its food. Now this is honestly probably a hatchling. Uh, there's not really, unlike North America, where I would say this is a yearling that just um, um, emerged from brumation, snake eggs are hatching pretty much all year round here, as far as I know. Uh, and especially during this transition from the dry to wet season that we're in right now, it's an excellent time for a juvenile snake to be coming out of its egg, uh, because there's plenty of forage available. Uh, so if you do ever see these snakes, these are supposed to be one of the most common species in Costa Rica. So if you do spot a snake, it is pretty likely that it will be a green parrot. Uh, absolutely no reason to be scared of it. While they are rear fanged, they pose no threat to humans whatsoever. Uh, so you don't need to harass the snake or, or harm the snake for any reason. Uh, very docile little snake. Very, very gorgeous. Really love the coloration. I mean, there's emerald green scales and that bronze underbelly. Something that we really just don't get back home. Really incredible animal. Look at that little guy. Moving him back in the wild now. I'm interested actually to see if these are vertical climbers like the black rat snakes. Can they climb right up trees or do they need branches? That's interesting for me to see. What does it look like? No, no, it looks like he wants branches. Let's try over here then. <laughs> the cameraman may have taken a small tumble on the jungle roots and I mean we are in the dense rainforest here many hazards to filming we'll see if there we go look at that <laughs> look how gracefully it moves through the trees I th wow that's beautiful so small and perfectly camouflaged. I mean, unless you were really looking hard at this tree, you would never see that snake. Especially if you were a parietum, like in an old basking or, or sleeping at night, you would never see it coming. And you'll notice the head bobbing as he goes up the branch. That's not him, you know, it's not imbalance. He's actually doing that to look more like a twig shaking in the wind. So just in case uh, a sharp-eyed anole did catch a glimpse of him, that would hopefully help break up his outline and make him look more just like a, a leaf in the wind. So although both the green parrot snake and the lowland forest racer live in the same habitat, hunt at the same time, and grow to similar sizes, they have managed to divide up their niches so that there is minimal competition between them. There are countless examples of this kind of specialization throughout the natural world, but I think it's especially cool to see this level of niche parishioning in snakes, which many people seem to assume are all about the same in terms of ecological role. Also, in my completely unbiased opinion, googly-eyed arboreal snakes are way cuter than 99% of mammals on the planet, including dogs. Well everyone, that's just about it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed, and learned something new about the lowland forest racer and green parrot snake. If you did enjoy, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a like on this video, and consider subscribing to my channel for more educational wildlife content coming every other Saturday morning. Thanks so much for watching, and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Benzino of The Wild Report. Signing out.